Welcome to another podcast from George Eastman House, International Museum of Photography and Film. My name is Grant Romer. I came to the museum in 1974 to have access to the collection, and now I'm part of the collection. Sort of cabinet of curiosity environment. Um, the skull there. What's what's the story of the skull? Uh, the skull. That's a 19th century sort of Halloween uh, lantern. Uh, people give me things, uh, weird things. Some of them there on the right hand side are iterations of the classic image of Jesus. This is the conservation laboratory of the Eastman House. Uh, the George Eastman House was the first institution to formally establish a conservation laboratory uh, devoted solely to photography. You know, this is a replica of the Walcott camera, uh, which was the first uh, successful portrait camera, right? Uh, in 1975, when it was established, it brought the traditions of the industry and technology, which is largely uh, focused on the image. If you wanted to preserve the image, you would copy it, transfer it to a new carrier. And the traditions of fine art conservation that gives a lot of emphasis and value to the actual object. It, you see in the back here, there is a mirror. See, the, the, it's, it's a concave mirror in the back. Well, that concave mirror will focus an image here, if I put this in here. And uh, so without a lens, using the primary optical device, which is the mirror, far older than the, the lens, they were able to make portraits in uh, as first as short as a minute, then 30 seconds, then down to six seconds in 1840, which made commercial portraiture possible with, with this camera. Well, conservation today isn't what you normally think of as restoration. You have something old that you try to make look new. Uh, conservation is largely uh, devoted today to keeping the, con the piece in the condition that it is in uh, first. We've had uh, experiences here, for instance, the famous uh, tintype of Billy the Kid. You know the image of Billy the Kid and with, you know, standing with the rifle looking buck-toothed and goofy. Uh, that was brought here uh, for documentation and conservation. Uh, it's a, an American icon, you know, we, we have certain images in our minds. Uh, this Billy the Kid image is one, is one of that. There's only one. It was brought here, we made documents of it in the condition that it was in, and uh, we preserve probably the best record of it. A Photograph of George Custer was brought into the lab early when I was a conservator. And it had been, uh, the corner of it had been broken in an exhibition accident. And as I was uh, preparing to repair the photograph, I remember that I had seen this photograph in a book. And it was the first time that I realized there was a George Eastman house because the credit under the photograph was in the collection of George Eastman house. And I had thought, wow, I would like to see the original of that photograph. Well, 30 years later, there it was in front of me. And I had forgotten my desire to go to the George Eastman house to see this photograph. But not only was I, I seeing it, but I was intimately involved in touching it and touching it with intent to do good to it. It was a deeply moving experience for me to understand that there is a, a sort of chain and continuity of experiences that uh, you're unaware of. So many people say photography is magical, but they don't tell you what they mean by that. Magic what? You make a bunny appear out of a hat? Is that what you mean? Well, it's, yeah, there's some trick to it. I've heard photography described as the heartbreaking trick. It's mysterious, miraculous, but it's science. It's the uh, stopping of time. It's a time technology. Uh, what you were talking about, the ability to stop time for a moment by your will which makes you significant. And the traditional definition of magic that I have always used is to control nature according to the will of man.
We hope you've enjoyed this Eastman House podcast, and if you'd like to find out more, visit us at eastmanhouse.org. This Eastman House podcast is made possible by the generous support of Midtown Athletic Clubs, a leader in upscale athletic and sports resort management with facilities throughout the U.S. and Canada. Visit us at midtownclubs.com.